So now we have this wonderful challenge and this challenge is to spread this movement all over the world in every town and village. Another thing that comes to my mind and when I come to such an assembly, I feel very positive, I feel very, uh, very enlivened uh, and very much reassured. And that is that when I see the youth are coming forward, youth are getting involved in such a uh, wonderful way. So many qualified youth are becoming involved in Krishna consciousness. Because the future actually is the youth. Is the youth that makes things happen. During Prabhupada's time, it is Prabhupada actually mobilized the youth of America. And they went out and did all kinds of wonderful things. And without the youth involvement, we don't really have much hope. So, here again I see that the youth are being so wonderfully being inspired, encouraged and guided in establishing this movement. So, uh, please those of you who are young, uh, please take up this mission very seriously. Why youth involvement is so important? Because youth are, they're grown up, yet they're free. They're not encumbered. Because once you enter into household life, it becomes difficult to commit yourself. Therefore, before you enter into household life, please try to do something wonderful for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Sankirtan movement. Just consider any big achievement in the world, who actually made it happen? It's the youth that actually made it happen. When you are young, then you are free. Then you can risk anything. Then even if you fail, it won't really matter so much because you are just alone. But when you have other responsibilities, especially two aspects, once you take up a job and once you get married, <laughs> then your freedom is considerably lost. So when you are free, just uh, direct your, channelize your energy and enthusiasm towards achieving this wonderful goal of spreading Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Sankirtan movement all over the world. I'm not uh, trying to discourage the householders or others by any means. But what I was actually trying to say is at some point in time, uh, we are more free to do things in a more effective way than some other times. And, but this movement is for everyone. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Sankirtan movement is for everyone. And the way we move forward some very difficult uh, uh, crisis. Like the world is becoming extremely violent, terrorists are becoming the biggest threat. 
the experts feel that the third world war will not be fought between nations in the third world war there won't be any boundary in the third world war the soldiers will not be wearing uniforms the third world war is going to be the war of terror the terrorists they don't have any nationality they can be your next door neighbor but they can be your enemy they can belong to the opposite camp opposite the enemy side they are not going to wear any uniform they don't have any geographical boundary of national boundary and we have seen in the recent past what happened in bombay so this is just the beginning the world is heading for a major major crisis we can't avoid it because the deadly weapons that they have invented the weapons that they have created for mass destruction if those weapons fall in the wrong hands you can well imagine what's going to happen to this world now what is the solution to this problem at least we know the only solution to this problem is the chanting of hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare we have seen that propad himself had demonstrated that when the calcutta during the second world war when the calcutta was facing the threat of being bombed by the japanese because calcutta used to be the ba- big british base at that time so the japanese were thinking of bombing calcutta and people were evacuating from the city people may have different theories but we know what the reality was it is because of shilo prabhupa taking out the harinam on the street of calcutta calcutta was saved <laughs> so <laughs> so this is how shilo prabhupa demonstrated his implicit faith in shri chaitanya mahaprabhu's instruction that harer nama harer nama harer nama iva kevalam kalo naste va naste va naste va gatirana tha shri chaitanya mahaprabhu made this point very clear when he appeared in other incarnations mahaprabhu comes with weapon he comes with disc or mess or bow and arrow or sword sometimes he uses his nail <laughs> so he comes with some weapon to kill the demons but in the age of kali mahaprabhu did not bring any weapon what's his weapon he brought a weapon uh, sanga panga astra astra the weapon what is the astra that came, mahaprabhu came with that astra is this hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare so let the terrorist attack what we will do we have our mridangas and kartals <laughs> the more severe their attacks become more louder will become our kirtan and then let we'll see what mahaprabhu will do he is the supreme personality of god him another important consideration here is like <clears throat> shri chaitanya mahaprabhu appeared in india at a time when the whole of india was under muslim domination isn't it quite amazing that in this age the supreme personality of godhead incarnated 
in a way, at a situation where the whole of India was under the Muslim rule. That means they're completely against the Vedic culture. At a time like that, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared and established the Sankirtan movement. Another important consideration is that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to distribute the holy name, Nam, Nam Sankirtan, Nam Yagya, Sankirtan Yagya. But who is the uh, Namacharya in this Nam Sankirtan Yagya? Srila Haridas Thakur, who appeared in a Muslim family. Now these two reasons, these two factors are great mystery, are two great mystery which probably will be revealed to us in course of time. We will see why Mahaprabhu appeared in India at a time when the entire India was under the Muslim domination and he established uh, the Sankirtan Jagga through a Muslim personality, Srila Haridas Thakur, apparently a Muslim personality. So, without uh, undermining any particular religion and all, but one thing is becoming very clear that, that uh, Islam is going to become the biggest threat to this world At that time, uh, Mahaprabhu had to deal with the Muslims in India. Today, uh, or gradually, uh, in course of time, the whole world will have to face with them in this very, very critical situation. And uh, we have to understand, we have to have that implicit faith and conviction that the only way to counteract their attack is through the Sankirtan movement. We are not going to pick up weapons to fight with them. Our weapon is going to be the holy name. And our strength is going to be our collective glorification of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Now are you all ready to listen to the Bhagavatam class by given by his Holiness Radhanath Maharaj. Yeah. Would you like to have prasad now? No. <laughs> we want to go on till the evening. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. When Srila Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj speaks on these subjects, it is deep from within his heart because he personally spent quality time with Srila Prabhupada, gave his life, his soul, his everything for the pleasure of Srila Prabhupada. What he is speaking, not about me, that's a whole other subject matter. But when he speaks about his concern for ISKCON, his concern for each and every devotee's life, it really is with a lot of realization. It's an expression of his love. 
for Guru and Goranga. The other things he said were just some sort of etiquette to encourage me, which I do not deserve, but I'm grateful for your kindness. Do you remember the Srimad Bhagavatam verse? <laughs> it was about deity worship. With your permission, I will speak something on this subject. Go Premanandi. Every year when we come to Pune, we worship the deities of Gornitai, who travel from the altar in the home of Krishna Chandra Prabhu and Radha Priya Mataji to bestow their mercy upon all of us. In that little temple, only a few people may come a day. But during Punayatra, hundreds and hundreds of times more people have the darshan of these deities than the whole rest of the year, than the 361 days of the year on their altar. These deities are very special to me. I have often told the story. My mother and father, although favorable and kind, were completely bewildered about what I was doing with my life for many years, from 1970 till 1989 until Srinathji Prabhu and Krishna Chandra Prabhu somehow or other convinced them to come to India. And although I tried to explain what I was doing, and they would sometimes come to visit me at different temples in America, every time they came, they became more bewildered. It hurt their hearts, but they never criticized. They always supported, but it was painful. So 19 years passed in this way, and by being with the devotees in Bombay, in those days it was Bombay, by seeing the quality of the character of the devotees, the kindness, the hospitality. The material position of these people, their hearts were transformed. I'll never forget in Radha Gopinath temple, at that time it was really a dilapidated old building. The temple room was just like shambles. And there may have been about 60, 70, 100 people at the Sunday feast lecture. And I was leading Kirtan with Murdanga. And right before my eyes, I saw my father dancing <laughs> with Srinathji Prabhu, running back and forth in the temple with all the devotees. Then I looked at the other side and I saw my mother and Srinathji Prabhu's mother's hands like this spinning in circles. <laughs> they would cry every night. They were proud. They actually took the highest happiness in seeing their son part of the Hare Krishna movement. They wanted to see Taj Mahal. So we went. First we went to Jaipur. That was interesting. We went to Jaipur and I took them to Radha Govinda Temple and as soon as the doors opened, my parents bowed down immediately. And my mother reached in her purse and my father reached in his pocket and they took out money and they said, can we give this to Krishna? 
Now, for an American middle-class elderly man and woman, this is not normal. They had a flight from Delhi. We drove, and on the way, we stopped in Brindaban. That was an interesting story. But while we were there, my mother and father thought we should buy a gift for Krishna Chandra Prabhu and Radha and Sri Nathji Prabhu's families because they treated us so nicely. And my mother said we should buy them deities. <laughs> so we bought these. These deities were bought by my parents as a gift for Krishna Chandra Prabhu's family, and. Krishna Balaram deities for Srinathji Prabhu's family, which are still being worshipped in his house. I was just thinking of the loving relationship that Krishna exchanges with his devotees through the forms of the deity. In this regard, I would like to tell one story. In a place on the bank of the Ganga called Ambika, Kalna, is the temple of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. How many of you have been to that place? Please raise both of your arms and say Haribo. How many have not been to that place? So, through the process of hearing, we will take you there today. They are the deities of Gauri Das Pandit. In Goro Ganodesh Tipika, which was written by Kavi Karnapur, the son of Sivananda Sain, he tells that the dearmost friend of Krishna and Balaram, Subal, appeared as Gauri Das Pandit, who was the dearmost friend of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda Prabhu. In the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, it describes Subal was forever drenched in the fountain of Sri Radhika's love. That he was never separated from the loving hand of Gokul Chandra Krishna. Not even in his dream for a single moment could he ever be separated from Krishna. He was the very embodiment of love. There was practically no pastime of Krishna that Subal did not have entrance to serve him. In the forest, Subal would carefully make beautiful bed for Radha and Krishna. And while Krishna would be laying on that bed with his head in the lap of Srimati Radharani, Subal would be singing the glories of the divine couple and fanning Radha and Krishna with a fan made out of the natural materials of the Vrindavan forest. There is a story that so nicely reveals the very intimate participation of Subal in Krishna's pastimes. One time when Krishna was herding the cows in the forests of Braja, he suddenly was struck with intense separation from Srimati Radharani. Who should he turn to? Immediately he called out for Subal. O oh, Subal, 
I cannot live unless I see her immediately. Please, by whatever means possible, go to find her and bring her here. Subal said, it is the broad daylight. How can I bring her from her in-law's house in the forest? It is impossible. Krishna said, by any means, somehow or other, you must, if you want to see me live. So Subal went to Yavat, and there he met with gopis to somehow or other make a plan. Now Subal had golden complexion, and his body so much resembled Srimati Radharani. So he put on Radharani's clothes, and Srimati Radharani put on Subal's clothes. And Srimati Radharani came out. And her in-laws, they called out, Subal, what are you doing here? And he said, I lost my calf. He ran this direction, I'm trying to find him. Oh, there he is. And then she picked up a calf and put it in her arms and said, I will go now return to the pastures. She went to the place where Krishna was waiting. And when Krishna saw Radharani dressed as Subal, he cried out, Subal, Subal, did you bring her? Did you bring my beloved? Where is she? And Subal, I mean Radharani in the voice of Subal said, it was impossible to bring her. I have come alone. Krishna began to cry. How he cried. He said that I will not be able to maintain my life. And then Srimati Radharani dropped the calf and came before Krishna and said, Do not you recognize me? It is me. In this way, Subal of Krishna's Leela, he appeared as Gauri Das Pandit. The younger brother of Surya Kela, of Surya Das Sarakela. They lived in a village called Shaligram. With the permission of his elder brother, Gauri Das lived in seclusion under a tree on the bank of the Ganges in the village of Ambika Kalna. There, he was constantly immersed in remembering Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. Knowing his mind, one day Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came by boat from Shantipur to Ambika Kalna. He said, O Gauri Das, I have come today. From Shantipur I went to Harinadi. From Harinadi I crossed the Ganges on a boat with this oar. And he held up an oar in his hand. He said, this oar brought me, I personally rowed it across the Ganges and with this oar, I will carry all of mankind across the ocean of birth and death. And today I give this oar to you, Goridas. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced him. This is very significant. What does this oar represent? It represents the mercy, the instruction of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. As he gave that oar to his devotee Gauri Das Pandit, it is this oar of the grace and instruction that he revealed to the world that has been passed down through disciplic succession. When Lord Chaitanya was personally present, he delivered many people 
by his Kripa Sita. Simply by seeing him, people would attain Prema Bhakti. There is the story in Navadweep where Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he saw the washerman who would do the laundry for Srivas. He was on the street. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu raised his arms, chanted the holy name, and this washerman, who wasn't even a devotee, he was from another religion altogether. He looked at Lord Chaitanya and said, I have seen, I have seen, and instantly Prema Bhakti awakened in his heart. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is dancing in that procession of Nam Sankirtan to the house of Chankazi, anyone, everyone, whoever they were, without discrimination, who saw him achieve Prema Bhakti. When he danced at the Ratiyatra, Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami explains all the pilgrims, all the priests, the pandas, all the residents of Puri, everyone who happened to be there, even the military, who were just trying to keep order in the parade, just by seeing Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with his arms raised, his beautiful golden form, pouring tears of love, loudly chanting the holy names. In an instant, they achieve prema bhakti. Unmotivated, uninterrupted love of God. They were qualified to return back home, back to Godhead, to Goloka Vrindavan. They didn't have to do any sadhana. That was the special mercy, Lord Chaitanya offered when he was personally present. But for all other human beings, for all time to come, he left this oar of his instructions. Srila Prabhupada's books are such a powerful manifestation of this or By understanding these teachings, reading Srimad Bhagavatam, associating with devotees, worshiping the deities, coming to holy places, performing Nam Sankirtan, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu if he sees that we are sincere in just accepting his instruction, he will personally carry us across the ocean of material existence with the oar of his grace. That is our good fortune. That is Srila Prabhupada's inconceivable kindness upon the whole world. Srila Prabhupada went on a boat, Jaladuta. It's very symbolic. He crossed several oceans on a boat with great difficulty. For what purpose? to help us cross the ocean of material existence and go back home, back to Godhead. Parama karuna pahundui jana nithai gorachan tava avatara sarasiromani kevala ananda kanda Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda are very kind, supremely merciful. They are doing what no other incarnations have ever done. Such a simple process for everyone, anyone, 
to follow the instructions of the Lord without duplicity. If we are just sincere to chant the holy names, to serve the devotees, to follow these basic teachings, by Srila Prabhupada's prayer, Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda will bring us to the highest perfection. Kevala Ananda Kanda. They are the essence of all avatars and their process is so joyful. Chanting, dancing, feasting, hearing wonderful stories, beautiful philosophy. From Ambika Kalna, after giving him the ore, Lord Chaitanya brought Gauri Das Pandit back to Nadia with him. They spent many days, and while there, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu composed several verses, a song in glorification of pure bhakti. And he gave those verses to Gauri Das Pandit and sent him back to Ambika Kalna. Gauri Das, for hours and hours and hours a day, he would just look at the beautiful handwriting of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and remember the Lord. He would recite again and again and again that beautiful, those beautiful prayers. And for those who are fortunate, who visit Ambika Kalna, those verses written by the hands of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and that ore that will carry mankind across the ocean of material existence are still there for us to see. But you have to pay the pujari a special donation before he'll show you. Gauri Das Pandit Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda were his life and soul. It is explained how Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda manifested from his heart in the form of the light in his eyes. It's a very beautiful explanation because when a person is dead, there is no light in that person's eyes. Light in the eyes is a symbol of life. That means his very life was Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. And because they were manifesting in the light in his eyes, wherever he glanced, that place would become purified. The mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was manifested in that place. Sometimes we hear stories about Srila Prabhupada by his disciples. Many, in fact, most disciples of Srila Prabhupada never personally spoke with him. But people talk about his glance. Just by his glance at them, they felt infused with enthusiasm, inspiration for bhakti. Just by his glance upon them, they really felt a connection to Krishna. Why is that? Like Gauri Das Pandit. Because Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu were his very life and soul. The light in his eyes was the grace of the Lord and wherever he glanced it penetrated those who were receptive. It penetrated their hearts and awakened their bhakti. Wherever he glanced it made that place into Brindaban, Navadweep, the spiritual world. For Gauri Das Pandit, a moment of seeing Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, 
he would be overwhelmed in ecstatic emotion. But a moment in separation, where he did not see them, he would plunge in an ocean of sorrow. The Lord is within everyone's heart. Knowing this, Lord Chaitanya met with Gauri Das and gave him an instruction. He said, "I want you to get a neem tree from Navadweep. I will arrange it, and you should personally carve the deities of Lord Ch- of me and Lord Nityananda, and worship that." And in this way, you will never be separated from us. Do not have any fear that you have never carved anything before. I will personally, in your hands, carve this deity of myself for you. So the Lord arranged for a neem tree from Navadweep to be brought to Ambika Kauna, and there Gauri Das with great pleasure, under the order of the Lord, began to carve. Bhakti Radnakar explains how this deity was self-manifest. How is that? Because Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda Prabhu, from within the heart of Gauri Das, personally carved their own forms, bound by the love of his devotee. And Gauri Das was simply an instrument to manifest the Lord. This is also very instructive. When we are bound by the love of the Lord, and when the Lord is bound by our love, we become instruments of that love. Just like the Lord manifested a deity for him. Similarly, let us use the example of Srila Prabhupada. He manifested the Lord in so many people's hearts in so many ways. Srila Prabhupada would have devotees read him his own books. And he would say, I have not written these books. Krishna has written these books. Hundreds of deities of Gornitai Radha Krishna installed all over the world. Srila Prabhupada was simply the instrument. And through him, Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, Radha and Krishna were manifesting themselves. It's very deep, profound, and absolutely wonderful. The path of bhakti is extraordinary. And Srila Prabhupada, when he would chant the holy names, when he would speak, he was an instrument. And through him, Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda were manifesting themselves within the hearts of those who were receptive to him. 